the yearly BP Statistical Review of World Energy. Well, I promised you guys a couple days ago in the previous video. If you didn't see that one, that one's a uh, important one. So if you didn't see it, please watch it. There should be a link in the corner now. If you did, we'll go ahead and continue on here as I promised to make a video going over all of the uh, updates from the BP stat review. So here they are. So in total, global energy usage or consumption is obviously, you would never have guessed, still increasing. Measured in tons of oil equivalents, the global total energy usage is, is now up to 13.864 gigatons of oil equivalent. Which, if you want that in uh, the usual, you know, tonnage that you're probably used to hearing, which is in reference to uh, equivalent to nukes, nuclear weapons, then the amount of energy consumed by humanity over 2018 was the equivalent of the detonation of 142 gigatons of nuclear weapons. Now, some interesting things related to that, actually. Back in, I believe it was 2007, uh, forgive the birds outside if the microphone picks them up, they're being really annoying. We really should just let our cat loose. <laughs> she's a, she's a, she's a vicious killer. She'd probably solve that problem really quickly. There were several studies and calculations done about waste heat and about how, you know, infinite uh, exponential growth for our civilization, aside from the fact that there's not enough things, there's not enough resources, period, we also would inevitably destroy ourselves via the fact that at a continuing rate of growth of 2.4% in energy usage each year, which is what uh, our growth was at the time, the waste heat from our energy usage inevitably by, they said, around the middle of the 2400s, would be enough to have heated the Earth's atmosphere to the boiling point of water. So I decided to find out exactly what that number would be, just to track our progress and hope we're, well, you know, not going um, all that quickly towards it. So back in 2007, the world's uh, consumption was 11.1 .1 gigatons of oil equivalent and growing at a rate of 2.4%. And so extending that out to the mid 2400s, that would by that time, if everything remained, you know, at a 2.4% growth rate, that would have the world's energy consumption number by then around 446 teratons of oil equivalent. Thankfully, we are, uh, uh, you know, still a very long ways off from that. Based on if we'd held a 2.4% growth rate, we're actually short of where we would have been this year we would have been expected to be up to 14.75 gigatons of oil equivalent by now. However, as I said, we're only at 13.86. So hopefully, um, not that I think that's actually going to happen because there's, there's literally not enough resources on earth to sustain enough people to consume that much energy, nor any actual possible way for us to legitimately ever actually produce it and consume it. But, um, you know, Hypothetically, if that were real, we are thankfully uh, slowing down and pushing our inevitable waste heat self-boiling off, you know, by several decades. Okay, so enough with the hypothetical fun times. Now we're going down everything one by one, starting with everyone's favorite, petroleum. Oh, and just in time, there's a C-17 passing right over... Uh, my parents' house at the moment, so you guys might hear that as well. And it suddenly vanished, or at least the noise did. I guess it went through one of those UFO portals. Okay, so, going down our list of nations, and, well, I guess first we'll start with the global total. The average number across the year was 99.8 million barrels per day of oil consumption for the world. At the end of 2018, as we turned into 2019, it had hit 100.2 million barrels per day. And currently, as of some of the most recent updates, it's up around 100.7. Contrasted over a current global production rate of, at this moment, around 100 flat. That 100 of which would actually be 102, if not for the OPEC Plus production cuts 
and the loss of Iran's production from sanctions. The aim of the production cuts, as you know, being to try to drain the world's excess inventories. Over the course of 2018, global inventories were drawn down, including the U.S., although the U.S. inventories are independently increasing, but this is total. U.S., Canada, Europe, everyone. Total global inventories decreased over 2018 from 3.07 billion barrels in storage down to 2.87 or so. And so far in 2019, although this data stops at the start of April, so everything up through the end of March, global inventories have continued to be drawn down from 2.87 down to 2.83 billion barrels in storage. So that aim is steadily working, and for a while it did have the desired price effect, but for prices have recently fallen out from the range they were staying at. So now down the actual list of countries and their consumption rates, starting at the bottom of the alphabet with Venezuela. Venezuela dropped even farther than I thought they were going to as their country continues to collapse. They formerly, up until several years ago, had, you know, an average consumption rate of, you know, between 700 and 900,000 barrels a day. And uh, they've now dropped in just the last two and a half years down to 409,000 barrels per day of consumption. The United Arab Emirates came in this year at 991,000 barrels per day. So just by the tiniest margin below the mark of consuming a third of their oil output domestically. Thailand continues growing at small rates, now up to 1.478 million barrels per day as their tourism continues to grow. Vietnam took a big jump, as I was expecting, and has crossed up over 500,000 barrels per day, now up at 522,000. Singapore, the tiny little nation of only a couple million people, but also with uh, a dozen plus million yearly tourists, continues growing, now up to 1.45 million barrels per day. Saudi Arabia, to my surprise, actually has started to decline in domestic oil consumption. That coming from the fact that they are finally beginning to switch some of their electricity generation over from oil-fired power plants to natural gas-fired power plants in order to try to counter the fact that their export ratio was constantly declining over time as their domestic consumption rose. However, they have at least for the moment turned that around, coming down from 3.9 to 3.72 million barrels per day. Pakistan seems to be dropping down for a second year in a row, but they were up near 600,000 barrels per day two years ago. And then they dropped. Now they dropped again. They're down around 498,000 barrels per day. Russia, as expected, as always, remains flat. Coming in almost the exact same as their average from the year before. Coming in this year, or last year, at 3.22 million barrels per day. Qatar continues climbing by just under 10,000 barrels a day per year. Now coming in this year at 328,000 barrels per day. Oman actually dropped. I was expecting them to continue increasing and pop over 200,000 barrels per day, but they actually dropped back down to 192,000. The Philippines busted up just into the range that I thought. They are now at 466,000 barrels per day of consumption. And Malaysia, to my surprise, uh, along with Pakistan, Malaysia also decreased for a second year in a row now coming down to only 814,000 barrels per day. Iraq continues jumping upward in domestic oil consumption, now up to 777,000 barrels per day. And Indonesia, I was expecting to increase, but they took a bigger upward jump than I was expecting. Indonesia now, as of the end of 2018, consuming 1.78 million barrels per day. In comparison to their oil production, which is now down to only 768,000 barrels per day. India, as expected, up over 5 million barrels per day of consumption on average now, coming in at 5.15. Again, along with Pakistan and Malaysia, Egypt dropped for a second year in a row, down to 760,000 barrels per day, whereas they had 
previously two years back been on their way up over 900. Bangladesh exceeded my expectations. I thought they were going to jump up into the 160s. They jumped up into the 170s, coming in for 2018 at 176,000 barrels per day. And Canada, as expected, just like Russia, remains pretty much the same, coming in at 2.45 million barrels per day. Australia jumped up like I was expecting by over 20,000 barrels, jumping up now to 1.09 million barrels per day. As Australia's population growth has begun to take off past the initial projections, and they were initially projected, for example, to hit 25 million people in 2025, but they hit 25 million people last year, near the start of 2018. Mexico decreased from 1.91 million barrels per day down to 1.81 million barrels per day of domestic consumption, which is still higher than their now fallen domestic production, of which the latest numbers were 1.74, and they've been on their way down to 1.6. Ecuador has, and I correct myself from, I thought I said in the previous video, they're not at 280, they're at 255,000 barrels per day, which instead of being over the halfway point is basically right at the halfway point in comparison to their oil production. As well as Algeria, Algeria of which is in terminal decline in terms of their oil production. Algeria's domestic oil consumption is now up over 400,000 barrels per day, up at 414,000. The UK and France both still holding actually the same, and I also mean the same number, they're both holding just over 1.6 million barrels per day. Kazakhstan took a bigger jump than expected, jumping from 317,000 barrels per day up to 357. Iran, dangerously, uh, their domestic consumption still increasing, going up from 1.82 up to 1.88 million barrels per day, as their production is uh, being constantly brought lower and lower because of all the sanctions. So that closing window continues, well, closing. And also that high domestic consumption ratio factors into the whole thing I talked about in the last video, of which, if you haven't seen, you really should see. I'll try to put a second link here if YouTube lets me. So if you still haven't seen it, go see it. Japan continues declining. Um, as everyone knows, uh, Japan's population itself has been declining. They reached a height of 128 million people in the 90s, I think. And over the last 20 or 25 years, they've declined down to around 125 million people. However, comparatively, you know, that doesn't sound like a lot of a decrease. At that same time, also, a lot more people were getting old and, you know, not driving or traveling anymore. And also, you know, over the course of time as well, Japan has implemented some of the most stringent fuel standards and also, you know, ramped up public transportation. So a lot of people walk, a lot of people take subways. But also, the number of people is dropping, and the number of old, undrivable slash untravelable people is rising. So over time, from their peak consumption rate, back in either the late 80s or the early 90s, I think, of 6 million barrels per day, Japan has come all the way down now to 3.85 million barrels per day. Germany, over the past 10 years, has gradually lowered themselves from 2.5 down to 2.3 million barrels per day. The European Union as a whole, over the course of 10 years, has dropped from 14.8 million barrels per day to 13.3. Oh, in some countries, I don't include their numbers from the BP Stat Review, because, like China, for example, because they actually do monthly updates themselves. Since this time last year, China has been fluctuating and gradually inching upwards between 12 and 14 million barrels per day. South Korea over the last 10 years has continued increasing, up from 2.3 to 2.8 million barrels per day. And actually, during one month of the past year, they exceeded 3 million barrels per day. And Africa, not as a whole. This excludes South Africa, Egypt, and Algeria, and uh, Morocco. So excluding Algeria, Morocco, Egypt, and South Africa, the other 49 countries that make up Africa 
as a whole total have gone up from 1.9 million barrels per day to 2 million barrels per day now. That 100,000 barrel per day jump not being over 10 years, that just being over the last single year. Okay, now over to natural gas. I started doing these alphabetically and then I went off the rails, so don't expect anything. Algeria is now up to a domestic consumption of 4 billion cubic feet per day, contrasted to their production of 11.5 billion cubic feet per day. Australia is now up to producing 12.5 billion cubic feet of gas per day, while having a domestic consumption of about 4. Iraq is increasing both gas consumption and gas production, but the second one hasn't been able to keep up with their consumption. So for the moment, it's a very small gap, but for the moment to fill in that gap, they're importing gas from Iran. Currently, Iraq's natural gas consumption is 1.6 billion cubic feet per day, while their production is only 1.2. Canada's natural gas consumption is about 11 billion cubic feet per day, while their production is 17.6. China has been upsurging like nothing you've ever seen. China is now up to consuming 27.1 billion cubic feet per day, contrasted against their domestic production rate of only 15.4. Egypt uh, out-consumes itself by a narrow margin, Egypt now having a domestic consumption rate of 5.6 billion cubic feet per day, contrasted against a production rate of only 5.3. Iran has a lot of natural gas, as they are co-owners, along with Qatar, of the Pars gas field in the Persian Gulf, which when it was first discovered and before they started extracting from it had a, you know, starting reserve amount of 1.1 quadrillion cubic feet. It has since, you know, been drawn below that, but not by that much. It still has like 980 trillion cubic feet in it. However, you would think Iran would be a massive exporter, but it's actually not. It consumes almost all of it domestically for its own power generation. Iran produces pumps out 22.5 billion cubic feet per day of natural gas, but consumes 21.5 of that, so only gets to export about a billion cubic feet. Qatar, on the other hand, has a massive export ratio, only consuming themselves 3.9 billion cubic feet per day. That 3.9 is contrasted against their production rate of 16.7. The UK's natural gas consumption rate has remained relatively flat, although starting to decrease in recent years, while their production rate from the North Sea has been continuing to plummet along its terminal decline slope. They consume about 7.4 billion cubic feet per day, while producing now only down to 3.8. Norway is a massive exporter in terms of its ratio, because Norway gets almost all of its electricity from hydropower, because they have a small population and they have a lot of uh, high altitude flowing down to low altitude rivers. So Norway is a very blessed nation and only consumes themselves 0.3 billion cubic feet per day while producing 11.5. And their production has still been increasing. Saudi Arabia consumes 10.7 and produces exactly 10.7. Bangladesh consumes about 2.6 billion cubic feet per day while producing about 2.6 billion cubic feet per day. Russia isn't as bad as Iran, but still consumes a decent enough portion of its own output. Russia consumes domestically 43.5 billion cubic feet per day while producing in total 64.2. So they still get to export a little over 20. The UAE consumes about 7.1 domestically while producing only about 6.2. India's production has remained flat while their consumption has been rising. India consumes 5.5 versus producing only 2.5. And the three all to nothing Asian nations, starting with South Korea. South Korea consumes 5.2 billion cubic feet per day over a production rate of zero as South Korea has no petroleum or gas, along with Japan, who consumes 11 billion cubic feet per day over a production rate of zero, and Taiwan, who consumes 2.2 over zero. Indonesia consumes 3.7 billion cubic feet per day 
while still pumping out seven. Kuwait consumes about 2 billion cubic feet per day versus producing only about 1.6. Mexico has, along with their oil production, their natural gas production, has been falling on its terminal decline and is now down to only 3.5 billion cubic feet per day while they are consuming 8.5. Turkmenistan, a nation famous for having a huge amount of untouched natural gas reserves, is only producing 5.8 billion cubic feet per day, as most of those are completely, as I said, untouched and undeveloped. Turkmenistan only consumes 2.7 while pumping out 5.8, and Thailand is now up to consuming 4.7 while down to producing 3.5. Now, I didn't include the U.S. because we get weekly data from the U.S., so, you know, you guys are updated about that all the time. In global total, the world is now consuming 369 billion cubic feet of natural gas a day. So, <laughs> you have that to think about. Now over to electricity. China, way faster than I thought, has already exceeded consuming 7 terawatts. China has now hit 7.1, whereas the U.S., who had once been over 4 terawatts, and then with the whole energy efficiency revolution thing that took place over the last 15 years, the U.S. had actually dropped back down to 3.7. And then as, you know, everything was switched over to energy efficiency stuff, again, population growth and new building construction became the main driver again, and we started climbing back up. And now we are back up over 4 and have come up to 4.46 terawatts. India has been skyrocketing as well. India is now up to 1.56 terawatts. And since they have about the same population as China now, if China is any indication, uh, India is going to be going a lot higher. Russia, for the last 10 years, has remained flat at about 1.1. Japan, through a combination of both the energy efficiency revolution and their declining population, has declined over the last 10 years or so from 1.2 down to 1.05. And that's everybody who's over at least one terawatt. Vietnam has been going up through the roof, giving everybody access to electricity. And as, you know, their own standards of living increasing, people are getting, you know, washers and dryers and TVs and such. Vietnam is up to 212 gigawatts. Saudi Arabia skyrocketing just as well, up to 383 gigawatts now. A huge amount of that electricity being consumed for air conditioning, you could imagine. Indonesia is climbing up pretty fast, up to 287 gigawatts. Iraq has nearly tripled their electricity access slash consumption over just the last 10 years, from 35 up to 103. The United Arab Emirates, uh, with all the hotels and all the buildings and all the resort things and all the super million, billion dollar play around, spend your money stuff they're constantly building, has been going through the roof despite their tiny population. They are now up to 136 gigawatts. Egypt continues climbing along with their population growth. As their population is nearing 100 million, their electricity consumption has now passed 200 gigawatts. Iran has been ever going up over the course of time and has now hit 310. Qatar, they've doubled their electricity consumption in the last 10 years, now up to 39 gigawatts. Singapore is now up to 52 gigawatts. Bangladesh has been progressing pretty good in terms of trying to get electricity to as many people as it can as quickly as it can. They've more than doubled in the last 10 years, gone from 34 up to 79. Turkey has gone from 198 gigawatts up to 302. Canada has been increasing, albeit very, very gradually, from 638 gigawatts 10 years ago up to 654 now. Mexico has continued climbing, going up from 269 10 years ago up to 332. South Korea, despite their population growth being very marginal, South Korea has been still rapidly expanding in electricity demand slash consumption. They've gone up from 442 gigawatts up to 594. Thailand's not going up that fast. 
going up over 10 years from 145 to 177. And Australia, still increasing, but increasing really slowly, going up from 241 10 years ago up to 261 today. And Malaysia, climbing at a decent pace, going up from 106 to 168. Now, Africa as a whole, now Africa as a whole, with the exclusion, of course, of Egypt, South Africa, Algeria, and Morocco. So the other 49 nations that make up the continent, Africa has gone from a total of 622 gigawatts 10 years ago up to 853 today. And the European Union has held almost flat with a slight decrease over time, 10 years ago being at 3.39 terawatts and today being at 3.28. And the world total, as I mentioned in my why the Green New Deal won't work doing the math video, which you should definitely watch, unless you think it will work and you want to be devastated and learn that uh, AOC is wrong and magic isn't real. But as I said, global electricity consumption is now almost up to 27 terawatts. Whereas 10 years ago, it was down at only about 20. To the decimal point, 10 years ago was 20.4, and the end of 2018, it was over 26.6. And if all, as it indicates to, continues, then by 2040, we will be either at or over 40 terawatts. All right, so some last little bits here. Let's see who's actually not being paranoid or being stupid and is actually building nuclear power. The U.S. remains exactly flat, again, at 849 gigawatts of installed nuclear capacity. No additions, no decreases. China has quadrupled their amount of nuclear power capacity over the past 10 years, now coming all the way up to 294 gigawatts. Whereas India, with smaller numbers, though still has doubled their capacity, now up to 39 gigawatts of nuclear power, and Russia has increased by a third, up to 204 installed gigawatts. Japan has been restarting their reactors after six, seven, eight years. Before the accident, they had 300 gigawatts of power being generated from nuclear, and then they brought themselves all the way down to 18. Now, during the last two years, they have restarted many and brought themselves back up to at least 49. Canada remains perfectly flat at 100 gigawatts. The UK remains somewhat flat at 65. Germany, as with unfortunately many other things, continues uh, down their path of declining intelligence and has been shutting theirs down one by one, dropping from 150 gigawatts 10 years ago down to only 76 now. And South Korea remains relatively flat at 133. Global total of nuclear power generation, it's right around 2.7 terawatts. And with just a few last things to uh, look at, world coal consumption for power generation peaked at 5.4 billion tons a year. For the moment, at least, it declined down to 5.3, but has sort of stalled. The U.S. has seen one of the biggest decreases as the U.S. is abandoning everything to chase after natural gas, a decision that is in time going to harshly backfire. But we'll have to wait for that uh, when it happens. The U.S. a decade ago was consuming about one gigaton of coal for power generation, and now is down to, as of the latest updates, only around 690 million tons. China had been ever increasing, however they've now gone flat. Ten years ago, they were consuming about 2.3 billion tons of coal for power generation annually, and now they've gone flat for the last few years at about 2.7. India is still firing up, nearly doubling over 10 years from 370 million tons a year up to 645. Russia has decreased a little bit from 140 million tons a year used for power generation 10 years ago down to 120, most of that coal capacity being replaced by new nuclear capacity. Australia has gone from 82 million tons a year down to 62, and instead of switching that over to natural gas or nuclear, Australia is going the route of uh, all sunshiny solar panels, and uh, when those don't work, 
powering the entire electrical grid with hashtag bunkers of batteries, a directional choice that is going to horrendously backfire. And the European Union, to no surprise over the last 10 years, has decreased their coal consumption for power generation from 432 million tons down to 317. And the last main page of sorts, the uh, global CO2 emissions. Global CO2 emissions actually flattened off and plateaued for a couple of years, though these past two years it's started ticking up again. Ten years ago, it was at 30.3 gigatons, and then it flattened off around uh, 32 or so. Now over the past two years, it's come up from 32 up to 33.7. The U.S., despite all the accusations uh, from its own politicians within the country of being the world's biggest emitter and needing to, you know, rein in its emissions growth, the U.S. has actually been declining in emissions for over 10 years. And even before that, China had already surpassed the U.S. back in the first decade of the 21st century. So I know, you know, politicians are, like, allergic to facts nowadays, although I'm pretty sure some of my older viewers are probably going to tell me that's always been the case. But, you know, they, they really need to just take some Benadryl and, and read. The U.S. has dropped from 5.6 gigatons 10 years ago down to 5 gigatons flat, whereas China had already been above us 10 years ago at 7.4 gigatons and has continued climbing up now up to 9.4. India has doubled over just the last 10 years from 1.4 gigatons up to 2.4. Europe as a whole, to no surprise, has dropped from 5 down to 4.2. Indonesia has gone from 376 megatons up to 535 megatons. And the Middle East, the region as a whole, has gone from 1.6 gigatons up to 2.1 gigatons over the last 10 years. All right. If you enjoyed this boring numbers barrage, then please leave a like on the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and share the video around to wherever. Only if you can and would like to, uh, the option to support me directly, which obviously helps even more than liking the video, uh, is down in the description below via my paypal.me or my monthly Patreon thing or my Redbubble shop with some random merch items based off my photography. But either way, I'll see you all around next time.